So I wasn't going to do anything for Christmas. It's not something that I'm massively bothered about. I mainly do it because of other people. I like the feeling that gift giving gives me. Uh, recently I did find out I was actually able to give some gifts this year along the lines that I really wanted to do. There are two people in particular who I've got something for that I'm really excited to see their reaction. I know they will love what I've got them. And that's what the feeling should be. So today's film, despite me not really wanting to touch on Christmas at all, does encapsulate that message. It even says it itself uh, later in the film, and we'll, we'll probably show that at some point. But if I have to do a Christmas film, I'm glad that I decided on this one. The original suggestion from Amy was something entirely different, a lot more in keeping with my, oh, do I have to? But then I was like, wait, there's a lot here. Santa Claus the Movie from 1985, one of the last Salkin productions, is one of the big influences on, on my youth, I would say. It is only two years younger than me as a film. So I've kind of grown up with it. Whenever I think of Santa, I see David Huddleston. Whenever I see Mrs. Claus, that's Judy Cornwell. I can't escape that. They are my go-to visions of these people. The elves are very much uh, Christopher Ryan, who is Mike from The Young Ones, in case that name seemed familiar. Uh, he's also been a few Santarans. Dudley Moore, as Patch, of course, you know, the innovator among the elves. And, of course, the great elder elf, the penguin himself, Burgess Meredith. This has an amazing cast, and these people have made an impact on my life. Of course, you know, David Newman as well, the screenplay, um, co-wrote the story as well, and the Salkins for bringing it into the world. But all of it came together to really inform my view of what Christmas can be, what it should be, and my view of what a Christmas film can be. Now, I'm not saying this is a perfect film. It's not a perfect film. It's showing its age in places. You know, it's 32 years old. It, it's definitely aged pretty well, but it is a product of its time. And, you know, the, the plights that we see in the film, and I will touch on those more in a second, you know, could be given a lot more treatment. I think it was trying to do too much too quickly. Oh, well, I say that, but we don't really get the main antagonistic part of the story until over halfway through. It's about 55 minutes in where we actually properly meet uh, Joe and Co uh, Cornelia. So it's um, pacing wise, not perfect. I actually thought that I hadn't seen it all or I'd not remembered it all, but I did. It was just that the end is very rushed. It's very suddenly here's the, the thing that we've got to overcome and we do it and come into this very twisted ending, which again, I will get to. But the big problem with the main story for me, you know, once we've gone through who is this guy, all the setup, and I do have to quickly say, I love the nods to the um, the legend and the uh, media that has surrounded him. You know, for example, the, the colour, where it's like, oh, green, I like that, but it's like, it's not his colour. Now, the eagle-eyed amongst us will have spotted at least the coat can in um, Joe's hand and the vending machine in the factory and yeah, I think there's a bit of product placement going on here because they do go with the red colour, which as far as I recall, uh, again, this might be urban legend though, please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, uh, but it's Coke's reason he wears red. It was traditionally green. So I did like that nod and also the uh, Night Before Christmas um, reference as well. And the fact that he's rather put out by it, which makes him go on the diet, of course, but he does sneak the odd cookies in here and there. But the, the big problem of the film, once it's got through all of that setup is whilst it's got a good heart it's saying look at these poor people you know the, particularly in joe's case you know these homeless children santa doesn't comprehend it he can't see how someone can be that destitute especially a child they should be looked after they should be cared for and it's it's a noble message but the one thing that i could not get out the back of my mind when re-watching it for this video was what about the others why is Joe the only one who gets this preferential treatment? As far as we're aware, he's not stopped off for tons of other kids. We never hear anything of that. And, as he was told early on by Dooley, all of the children of the world are his children. He should know. Um, so, yeah, it's heart's in the right place, but it's missing a, a chunk of people that it could be helping as well. I think the fact that he doesn't understand it, there may be a bit of leeway we can give to the character... Um, because, you know, he gives him a present, you know, the, the elf portrait. But where's he going to put it? 
He doesn't have a, a box of knickknacks, you know, particularly when he's older. He doesn't have a mantle to put it on for now. It's no use to him. He can't eat it. He may be able to sell it to get food. And on the subject of food, after I've talked about the coat product placement, um, yeah, that, I think we do need to address the, the rather big double fries bent over shaped elephant in the room, the old golden arches. Because this film clearly seems to have an anti-capitalist message. BZ is clearly, you know, an evil, unscrupulous toy maker. We're meant to take that impression away, whereas Santa is, you know, the old homemade cottage industry um, kind of guy. So maybe it's partially anti-industrialism, because even before Patch teams up with John Lithgow, um, in a great role, I think he does it really well, um, you know, even before that, his machine, it's, it's flawed. You know, it doesn't build the toys to last, um, compared to obviously elf-made products rather than handmade. I like that touch. Um, you know, they obviously are built to last and they are better, which is why the assistant's job goes to someone else. But, you know, it seems to have this message that corporate greed is bad, but it's still a film. It's out there to make money. And there is, I think it's a couple of minutes long. Uh, if you've seen it, you know exactly what I'm on about. Joe up at the window, staring in, watching everyone enjoying McDonald's. That is an advert. And even in the credits, it does give them special thanks for their consideration. So McDonald's paid and a, a, probably a hefty chunk to get that look. The thing that this homeless boy wants more than anything else in the world is the warm, homely, welcoming feeling of a McDonald's restaurant. Maybe I should get some money for that. That was a good, that was a good glowing report. Um, but it's the thing that, that kind of got me about this film. It, it tries to give one message whilst also kind of contradicting itself and it's you know again part of that thing with the homeless situation it's trying to give a good message but it's not doing it fully it's not doing it in a way that makes you think oh yeah they've really thought about this they've really made sure that the plight is brought to the fore I mean yes it's got me talking about it it's got me thinking about it but it's still a little wishy-washy and yeah it's a kids film maybe you don't want to slap too he too heavy you know a topic on there and really sort of go into it okay but still, it's one of the things that rankles me, and it's only re-watching it that that's come to the fore, so I suppose maybe that's my adult mindset. But everyone does a good job in this, you know, it is entertaining, it is a fun, festive film for all the family. Any other F words I can get in there? Not that one, that's not appropriate. Um, but you know, it, it is entertainment, I, I enjoy it, it's, it's really, I mean, some of the score, I haven't even touched on that yet. Um, I didn't realise until I looked into it that it's actually Henry Mancini, the Pink Panther guy. Same guy, yeah. And the fact that it incorporates a load of um, carols into the, you know, the score as well at various points. You do hear refrains of these different uh, songs that we've all heard over the years, you know, every Christmas. And I do love that. I think that was a really good um, idea to include those. I mean, yes, almost every Christmas movie out there does it, but the way it integrates them, I think, is is what speaks to me more. And there's a lot of the little tunes that are just original compositions that have the Christmassy feel to them that I think have informed some of my songwriting over the years in the same way that Charles Fox's number five theme uh, from Short Circuit 2 um, you know, really sort of spoke to me. I think there's elements of this that when I'm thinking of Christmas music, I do get pieces of music from this and not just the uh, incorporated elements from other songs. But yeah, it's, it's, it's really just one of those films that I kind of remember bits of it. I often think that I've not seen it in full and I forget little bits and then I see them and I, it just warms my heart. Um, and that's what Christmas is about. It's about spending time with loved ones. It's about the good feelings that we get in giving gifts. I think that's, again, you know, the message that we should really take away. It's not about what am I getting back for it. It's not about how much have you spent on me. It's not about how much have I spent on you. The old phrase keeps coming out. It's the thought that counts. And really, that's it. The gifts that I'm, I'm, I'm really optimistic about this year are ones that I've thought about. I've taken things that people have said or that I know about them or elements of their situation that could be better and, you know, tried to work around them and incorporated that into my idea. And I think if we all adapt that, it could be a lot better. The world is a different place now, Anya. You don't see it. The 
people don't seem to care about giving a gift just so they can see the light of happiness in a friend's eyes. And I think if you can, I've done it in previous years, and I will put a link down below. I know it's quite close now, so it might be a little too late for this year, but maybe to bear it in mind for future. But if you can give to homeless charities or, or such, you know, around this time of year in particular, when it's cold and people really need a warm bed and some warm food and just someone who's going to give them a chance, please do. You know, even if it's just a tiny bit, whatever you can afford. I know, I think I've seen someone who um, is not doing Christmas cards instead. They're just giving money. So, yeah, save your Christmas card budget and do it that way, perhaps. Because, you know, it is one of those things that won't go away. We try and hide it. But it's a real issue, so you know I don't want to bring people down. Think of it as another way of giving. It's a positive. You're helping the world be a better place a little bit at a time. There is nothing wrong with that. So until next time, not as always, but remember, it's Christmas all over the world tonight. <laughs>